Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be talking about transfer deadline day. Yes, the window just closed and it was exciting. Not. Wow, there was like nothing happening all day. I mean, really, the, the, the big news of the day was Quadrado signed for Chelsea. And if this were FIFA 15, they just strengthened their squad immensely. But in real life, uh, Quadrado, I mean, he, he's good for sure, but I don't know if he's going to do the thing for Chelsea that everyone's expecting him to do. Now on for the real news, the Manchester United news. Probably the biggest news of the day was Darren Fletcher signed for West Brom. Darren Fletcher, D. Fletch, Fletch Dog, the Fletcherino. No one actually calls him that. The dude's gone. I can't, honestly, I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm a little shocked because even though he hasn't been on, you know, much, many of the squads, for Louis Van Hall, he has been a devoted United player since the beginning. I mean, he signed back in 1995 for the academy when he was like 11 or some shit. So, I mean, the fact that he's now gone, especially during the January transfer window, is kind of mind-boggling to me because he always seemed like a guy who would get a good send-off. I guess we're just going to have to do a big thank you Fletch chant during Cambridge United's game today. Best of luck to Fletcher. He's been a great servant for United. He left to get more game time, and I'm sure he'll get that at West Brom. The best of luck to him. I hope he can do everything they can for them and they understand how to use him because he is one of the better midfielders that we've had over the past few seasons. The whole illness thing aside. Best of luck, Fletch. Thanks for everything. Wilfried Zaha left on a permanent deal. This is a dude who signed for Manchester United but played for Crystal Palace pretty much the entire time he signed for Manchester United. It was like Sir Alex's last signing. Signed him in January, but immediately loaned him back out. Crystal Palace had him for the rest of that season. And then the next January with Moyes, he loaned him out back to Crystal Palace for the rest of the season. And then this season with Louis Van Hall, he loaned him out immediately. And now in January, he's going back to Crystal Palace permanently. I guess this guy just isn't that good. He's not Manchester United quality or he has problems or something because I mean, it seemed like a big waste of money and a big waste of time to keep to buy him just to keep loaning him out and then eventually just sell him back. We don't, nah. <laughs> we're, we're, it was a mistake, sorry. It seems like he's not up to snuff for Manchester United. We've cut the ties. He's no longer a pseudo Manchester United player playing for Crystal Palace. He's a straight up Crystal Palace player. So he's back to where he's comfortable. He's, he's, he's the big fish in the small pond over there and best of luck to him. Whatever. Lingard loaned to Derby. Immediately people think, oh, well that means he's on in the exit door for United. Nah, because he also signed a Manchester United contract extension. So I think this is just for him to develop and get some more game time. And we haven't seen much of him, but from the his from his performances in preseason and what he's shown up to this point, I think it's good that we hold on to him, try to develop him, and also loan him out to get more game time. I don't know if Derby's the best place for that, but We'll see, and also Marnik Vermeil left on a permanent deal, and I haven't really seen much of him. I mean, I think he's never played a senior game, made a senior appearance for Manchester United. I think he was very much a, an academy a youth player, and then he just, uh, he just, it just didn't impress the coaches. So now we just, you know, let him go, and I wish him all the best. Sadie Janko left on loan as well. The only signing we made this transfer window was for Andy Kellett from Bolton Wanderers on a, on a loan for the rest of the season. I don't know anything about him. He's he's a defender. He's young. He's been on loan with, I think, Plymouth Argyle for a long time. So he hasn't been playing much for Bolton, but he has been playing. So honestly, this is the most confusing, confusing, confusing transfer that we've done because i mean we have luke shaw we just spent like 30 million plus for him well i guess that's pretty much it as far as left backs so maybe it eased his back up but it's kind of like if you loan someone you're, you're going to be playing them often and it just feels like we're not going to be playing this guy very much who knows he might be the next you know superstar you know left back in the world we don't know, and but it still is just on loan. I, it, this is this is confusing, and that goes to show all those freaking news gossip columns, all those all those people reporting that we've met deals for Hummels, Royce, Cavani, Snyder, Robin. The list goes on forever. We're linked to pretty much every single big player, including Lionel Messi. They had no idea what they were talking about. It was all pure bullshit. I was kind of hoping for a bit more uh, transfers than what we did. January is always a big 
problem anyway. So maybe we're just keeping it for the summer. Maybe we're just, you know, we're keeping an eye on the players that, you know, will, 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 will be available in the summer rather than overspend for them in January. What did you guys think of the January transfer deadline day? What do you think was the best move for either player or club? Leave a comment below. Also, be sure to leave a like, smash that like button, make it your bitch, and subscribe. And we'll see y'all next time.